Now, here on the podcast, we don't usually talk about Transformer comics primarily because I don't want to spoil a lot of the big primary beats and stories that are going on within those comics. The Transformer fandom is kind of slow to reading a lot of those books. Sometimes they don't discover some of those Transformer comics until way five, ten years after they've come out. And I mean, I don't blame them. Some of those books are fantastic by fantastic creators, and some of those are, well, you might as well spend that time watching a Hanna-Barbera GoBot episode. No shade to GoBots, of course. <laughs> but either way, what I'm just trying to get at is normally I don't like to talk about spoilery stuff in the comics because sooner or later I want those fans to go and read those books and enjoy them for the first time. But this is a piece of news that unfortunately... Uh, kind of spoils one of the big hooks at the end of a recent IDW comic, and it might be related to a piece of Transformer product that we might be getting in the future that has been long overdue. So I want to kind of go into that. So again, if you are listening to this, spoilers beware. And uh, so that is that. So Hasbro Pulse did a post on their uh, Instagram account, on their Twitter account and on their Facebook group uh, promoting the next mini series of Transformers IDW Shattered Glass comic books, as well as, you know, saying, hey, the past books are going to be collected soon, so be sure to check those out from part one. And that is that. But they also made the mention of the big hook that happened at the end of the book, which is the Decepticons are trying to gain control of a Titan. And at the end of the book, they do gain control. A Titan comes to life pretty much. And that Titan is Shattered Glass Metroplex. Now, it's not just anything, because like the character of Shattered Glass Metroplex has never been visually depicted properly before. Joshua Perez did a slight recolor of him, and it was done in a gag comic that he used to do back in the day with fun publications. And he did it in like a Junkie Ons color scheme, but it was never like canon. It was just for fun, something on the side. And... Then they got around to finally doing this one here, and it looks like, I mean, I'm looking at the sculpting of the head and stuff, and, and I understand there's obviously some artistic liberty that could be done, but this looks like they took the Titan Class Thrilling 30 2013 Metroplex Titan Class toy and gave it the long overdue Metro Titan colors. Now, for people who aren't familiar, Metro Titan was a recolor of the original G1 Metroplex toy. It was part of the Transformers Zone, I guess we'll call it imprint, uh, back in the day in 1990, 1991. And that was that. And it was just this like, hey, it's an evil version of Metroplex. That's all it is. It's it's from the plant from the, the moon of Titan from Saturn. It's gonna be the big bad that uh Diatlas and Sonic Bomber and the crew are gonna have to take out before they get to Volinger and everything. So that was that and that was that character. Years later, we get our Titan class Metroplex. You know, here's here's the the 2013 retail version that I think it the MSRP was like 125, and then you had the SDCC version, which the MSRP was 150 because it came in that humongous box and it came with those little extra PVCs and stuff or those decoys. And back then in 2013, nine years ago, we were like, all right. So uh, when are we going to get the uh, the inevitable Metro Titan repaint, right? I mean, it's it's just a given. It gave us the the chromey kind of Metroplex version with SDCC. Of course, also the Legends version was like that. And then, of course, uh, you gave us the retail version, which kind of had some different kind of uh, paint hits and everything like that. So when's the uh, Metro Titan version? And it never came. Nine years later, and it still never came. And now, nine years later, the demand for that Metroplex mold has skyrocketed. I mean, the the cheapest sold listings on eBay as of this recording are between four hundred and five hundred dollars and sometimes six hundred and seven hundred dollars. And this is the retail version, which again, original retail was one twenty five, now four hundred to five hundred bucks minimum of sold listings. And then let's not even talk about the SDCC one. You know, original MSRP one fifty, and now it's going for like seven hundred to a thousand dollars. hundred percent complete, of course, incomplete. That's a different story. Uh, but yeah, so, I mean, there's, there clearly is a demand for that mold. 
And now that we're going into the second run of the Shattered Glass comic books, the Titan class has now awoken in this comic book, the, the Metroplex Titan. And he's in these Shattered Glass colors that also invoke the Transformer Zone Metro Titan colors, much like how Ultra Magnus Shattered Glass did double duty, where it's like, oh, hey, it's Shattered Glass Ultra Magnus. But it's also kind of Powered Convoy, the Diaclone character but it's also kind of magma convoy the e-hobby kind of character so it kind of did like you know triple duty in that case i think they're kind of going to look the same way here well, hey if we put out if we put out titan class metroplex after all these years nine years and put him in those metro titan colors and we could sell it as shattered glass but we could also sell it as metro titan so we get the shattered glass collectors we get the g1 collectors who like the japanese g1 stuff there's a lot of different ways we could sell this, much like, again, the Shattered Glass Ultra Magnus did. It's like triple duty in this case. Um, that's pretty awesome. So there's a strong possibility this could be coming. There's a very This could be like some out-of-nowhere Hasbro Pulse kind of thing. They tested water with Black Zarek. Black Zarek was our first ever Hasbro Pulse Titan Class exclusive. It sold very well. So it probably told them, hey... If we're going to roll the dice again, let's roll the dice on a named character. And not only will it be a named character, it's Metro Titan. He has history in Generation 1, but he's also something that if we slap that color scheme onto something in a current comic book, we could even get a slither of that audience, too, that'll be like, oh, not only is this a G1 historical zone kind of thing, this also could be applied to my Shattered Glass shelf and my Shattered Glass characters and that Bakon history. So there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of layers. I'm not saying this is happening, but considering that the Titan class Metroplex is going to be a huge focus of this comic book, and we've already seen how there's going to be more reveals coming every single month in relation to this Shattered Glass line. We're going to be getting some kind of reveal in May, obviously, whoever that'll be. Stay tuned for that because that'll be very interesting. And then it opens up the huge discussion, too, because, I mean, I was even thinking like, hey, if, if they ever get around to other Titans, you know, two, three, four years from now, they could do Omega Doom, a.k.a. Omega Supreme, and then they could do that double duty kind of color scheme. Yeah, OK, Omega Doom had that more, uh, I guess we could call it like brownish dark with the orange and the golds and stuff like that. And the mold came from Cybertron Menasaur, which was known as Galaxy Force Mold Diver and it gets complicated with that. Or they could just go, hey, um, you know, Shattered Glass Omega Supreme is Omega Sentinel colors, and we could just do double duty on that Siege mold. Sure. You know? There's a lot of ways that we could go about this. I mean, but I think it's really fascinating. It's a discussion that I kind of wanted to open up because I know a lot of people were... They were unexcited with Cybertron Metroplex. I was, but, I mean, I'm a different cat that's cut from a different piece of cloth when it comes to transformers uh, i kind of enjoy all the different universes for their uniqueness and uh, megalo convoy came from one of my favorite transformer series you know galaxy force was awesome so i kind of have a bias in that too but the point being is that a lot of people were unsatisfied with that cybertron metroplex reveal they wanted another g1 metroplex this isn't really 100% a G1 Metroplex, but if you could get a chance to get that mold, and it's Metro Titan, and it's going to hit a lot of different collectors in a lot of different ways because of its double duty of what it's trying to do, I think that's going to be pretty interesting. Let me know what you think. Just a little, you know, little uh, penny for your thought. Let me know what you think. Interesting stuff, and hopefully we'll get some more information later this week.